بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome back Continue with our program Deen and Doon We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to teach us the deen and يريد الله به خيرا يفقه في الدين If Allah wants good for you Allah عز وجل will make you knowledgeable in the deen الحمد لله And how do we learn the deen? Obviously you learn the deen by mixing with the ulama with the, with the students of knowledge uh, reading the books Getting to understand more because طلب العلم فريضة على كل مسلم ومسلمة. Seeking knowledge is a must upon every Muslim. Seeking wisdom, الحكمة ضالة المؤمن أينما وجدها فهو أولى بها. حكمة wisdom is, the, is should be the goal of the believer. You learn it from anywhere. And حكمة generally in every aspect, not only in deen, not only in 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 شرع knowledge. But generally speaking, try to learn the wisdom. And obviously, we're going to learn the wisdom from the wise people by listening to them, by sitting in their midst. And, and normally when we speak about wise people, uh, the, the, the picture that comes to our minds are those people who, mashallah, got experience in life. And alhamdulillah, today we are so honored we're having one of, our, one of the alamat, one of the signs in South Africa and in, in, in Cape Town. And he got, mashallah, so much of experience. And let me uh, just introduce him, uh, Dr. Sheikh Muhammad Radwan Raylands. And uh, Sheikh Raylands, uh, he is actually the head of the National Nasiha Forum. Uh, and also, uh, Doctor is the life president of the Strandfontein Islamic uh, Islamic Society or Islamic Assembly. May Allah Subhanahu wa Taala accept from Fadilat Sheikh Doctor, and may Allah Subhanahu wa Taala benefit us from his knowledge. Let's just welcome him. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi taala, Sheikh Sameekh Jad. Uh, it's a privilege and honor to be with you. Jazakallah khair. Jazakallah khair. Uh, may Allah Subhanahu wa Taala increase your knowledge and in wisdom. And uh, I always say that South Africa, subhanAllah, as a community, as a Muslim community specifically, are very, uh, very blessed with so many, uh, so many wise people and so many good people and so many alamat, uh, sort of signs around uh, the, the, the Sheikh Taha Karan, rahimallah, Sheikh Yusuf, and so many, even of the current people, uh, subhanAllah, without forgetting any names or mentioning names. But alhamdulillah, uh, there are so many people in our midst and we need to, Show people and le- let people learn from the from the wisdom of those uh, scholars and ulama and wise people around to benefit from their knowledge. Sometimes people uh, people get to know this after after they pass away. They get to know about them and they get to read their books. No, we should actually utilize uh, the, those uh, uh, gems with us in our community to benefit from their knowledge. And today we have a gem, inshallah. Let's let's uh, uh, speak to Fadilat Sheikh Doctor uh, for the Sheikh. Um, in the beginning, maybe you can give like a little bit of introduction to yourself and to the a'mal that you initiated. MashaAllah, I believe there are so many a'mal and good uh, activities that you took part in. Uh, this is just before we go to the subject, which should be marriage, inshallah, be focusing on marriage today, inshallah. Fadal al-Shia. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashraf al-mursaleen. Sayyidina wa nabiyyina wa mawlana Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa ashabi ajma'in. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Alaikum assalam. To yourself and the viewers of Hilal TV. Assalamu Yes, alhamdulillah. In life, we as people, as Muslim men, lead to, need to lead and not to be led by others. Yeah. So therefore, in everything that we do, we should have a niya or a vision and our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam says, "Every action starts with intention, Allah. and all actions will be judged by its intentions." Sorry. So, whoever, whoever migrates towards Allah subhanahu wa taala and His Rasul, his migration will be to Allah subhanahu wa taala and His Rasul. Whoever migrates or strives towards a um, to Allah, to a woman that he wants to marry, etc. to Mahajara ilayhi. So your striving will be exactly to, which, to that which you have striven to. Um, so in poetic sense, we say one ship sails east, the other west, where the self set sails that blow. It is the set of the sails and not the gales that determine the way to go. Like the ways of fate, as we voyage along life, it is the will of the soul that determines the goal, and not the strife nor the calm. So we as 
human beings, we learn from the cradle to the grave. And we learn about everything that can be learned of. And knowledge will never give an atom's weight unto oneself unless you give your total self to knowledge. And if you want to attain great heights in learning, it is that you must burn the night lamp oil and sacrifice. So there's no shortcuts in life. A purified intention, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make the path easy of learning for us. So, whoever strives will attain. And uh, so, when it comes to ourselves, uh, if you are young and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed you with all the characteristics, with all the energies, with all the good health, with all the characteristics uh, that goes with that, and you apply yourself uh, within the framework as a human being and in the sharia, you will live in old age secured. So, we, fortunately, born in South Africa, in Cape Town, and we've been raised strictly by our parents, according to the best of the Islamic ethics, preparing us for the future, irrespective of whether we lived through the previous dispensation of apartheid, it never deterred the Muslims from being good Muslims and doing what they're supposed to be doing to the best of their ability. And Allah knows best. And here we find ourselves today that through those dangerous times, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helped us. And today we are victorious in many ways. And we can be an example to the world out there to speak about our experiences. Mm. So yes, I am the life president, alhamdulillah, of the Sarafatayn Islamic Assembly uh, for the last uh, 35 years. Um, I'm also the, uh, one of the senior people in the National Nasiha Forum, which is mostly retired academics around the country. And then, of course, um, also uh, the International Jewish Union, more advisory in the sense of international relations, and the same also with the World Food uh, Security. And, uh, and there are many others, but uh, for now, as a retired person, uh, we cannot actually retire physically, maybe from our formal work that we did before when I served in the government, and I served in most of the departments of government, and I uh, was even recognized for doing work beyond the scope of my employment mm. by the ministries concerned. So we are grateful. We always ask Allah subhanahu wa We're always grateful to Him. And, 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 and through being, showing that gratitude uh, uh, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and appreciation, uh, we are where we, we are today, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Allah bless you and increase you in, in ilm and in experience and in wisdom. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prolong your life in the ta'a of Allah azza wa jalla. We benefit the ummah more yes. and more from your wisdom. And I can see from your speech, mashallah, so many wisdoms are coming in Arabic, in English. Allah azza wa jalla accept yeah. from you. Now yeah. the wisdom we want to connect today to the subject, uh, and this is the marriage. Uh, Bismillah, inshallah, you may give us some wisdoms about that subject, inshallah. Yeah. Marriage uh, is a factory of good deeds. It produces virtues every moment. كما قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم كسب الحلال فريضة بعد الفريضة. If we try to conduct our lives within the bounds of Sharia, then it becomes a form of ibadah. It become, becomes a, a charity. Uh, and and, and it's, it, it is really, uh, there are so many benefits. Um, even by placing a morsel of food in the mouth of one's wife is a sadaqah, is a charity. Uh, it brings 
it develops, it generates mawadda and mahabba and rahma. Now, at another occasion, the Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned to his companions, uh, Ridwanullahi alaihim, and uh, that even having sexual intercourse with one's wife is a sadaqah, is a charity. They were perplexed, they were amazed, they were astonished. And then the Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam explained to them that if we have sexual intercourse outside wedlock, it will constitute zina, which is a major sin in Islam, which constitutes uh, zina and fornication. And therefore, it's only logical if we apply ourselves within the framework of marriage that it will, it will amount to a sadaqah. Mashallah. Marriage is symbolic of the future related, which makes the present exciting and bearable with ever growing hopes of future attainable realities. That future can be seen in the bearer of the child. That enormous excitement of what the baby is going to have when it is born. That excitement, enormous excitement that permeates throughout the two integrated union of families. Now marriage comes with its own potential wealth. And as we journey through a happy marriage, one comes across, the couples, they come across exclusive pearls. They come across rare gems, but unfortunately, very few couples are able to recognize these beautiful pearls and these beautiful gems. Everything in Islam is consecrated and sanctified to the extent that it brings us nearer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even um, the wife in the Arabic language is called a hurma, from the root word haramun, which means sacred. Islam ennobles, uh, ennobles what might appear to us as very insignificant and earthly. Mm -hmm. So marriage, the wedding day, is the beginning of everything. Sorry. But marriage on that day is the launch of the greatest event of one's life, and that is your future, and that is the procreation of children. Allah. Allah. We must strive to bring about an environment where piety can flourish and where we can breastfeed our children with the milks of piety, an environment where peace and tranquility prevails in our homes, where each partner is conscious of fulfilling the rights of the other and not expecting him or her rights to be fulfilled. If we don't take cognizance of this, there will be a lack of peace and tranquility in our homes. If we are, however, appreciative of the unselfishness and sacrifices of our partners, then only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will place barakah in our lives. Allah. In our daily life, we do not find two chairpersons of one organization or group. We will find a chairperson, and with him is the vice chairperson. The chairperson always consults the vice chairperson and respects his or her opinion. The husband and wife should have a similar relationship of mutual consultation. He is the shepherd of his flock, and she is the shepherdess of his children and property in his absence. Both will be questioned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala regarding 
their responsibilities and their charges on the day of judgment. No. So treat your wives throughout your lives as if you are courting them. Show interest in them and no new interest. Wherever you can take the wife with, there will be lesser chance of, wisdom, uh, of mischief. Be flexible in your attitudes. If you have the right attitude, there will be altitude, prosperity, and good fortune. Otherwise, contrary to that, it will be latitude without parameters. Let moderation govern your, your lives. Avoid debt and spend only where necessary. The road to independence and financial stability is a long one and requires moderation in our lives. We must already think about the education of our future children and its financial stability the day we get married. In the marriage khutbah or sermon, we recite three ayat based on taqwa. This taqwa is of prime importance. It is of paramount importance. It is even a prerequisite to marriage. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is omnipotent, all-powerful. And we, as Muslimin, need to empower ourselves. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is omniscient, is all-knowing, and we need to acquaint ourselves with knowledge. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is omnipresent. And of course, we as the creation don't have that quality to be present everywhere. Inna Allah kana alaykum raqiba. Allah is forever watching over us. So, taqwa. Uh, so if we become a lawyer, let us become the best of lawyers. A doctor, medical doctor, the best of doctors. Mm -hmm. And if we are Muslimin, let us become the best of Muslimin, doing our best. And in this case of marriage, once you enter marriage, you become a husband and a wife. But before that, you didn't have that title. So to become the best husband to your wife mm -hmm. and the best wife to your husband. And eventually, through that process, you will become the best of fathers and mothers. MashaAllah, In inspiring wisdoms. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from you and bless you for that. And I hope that you write all, all these wisdoms in, in, in a book or something. Inshallah. Inshallah. So, there are five avenues of success for those who possess the quality of taqwa. Mayyattaqillah yaj'allahu makhraja. Whoever is conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will give him an exit from all his problems. Yukafir anhu sayyati. Allah will atone, expiate his sins. Wa yu'zim lahu ajara. And Allah will magnify, multiply, and increase for him his reward. And concerning the daily routine of life, Allah will always grant you an easiness. And Allah will grant you such sustenance which is beyond the perception of the human mind. Taqwa mm -hmm. means that we should exercise patience when, when it comes to vibrations of misunderstanding. Mm -hmm. When both flare up and allow their emotions to explode, they will say things which they will regret and feel sorry with afterwards. One of the partners must control his or her anger and fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No. Fire can only be extinguished with water and not fire. So one of the partners must control his or anger and be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or fear to transgress the rules of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or fear to step over the line of what the Sharia is all about. No. A good marriage needs to be created. The creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wants the animate creation not ghair akil, akil, the animate creation to be creative. A good marriage needs to be created. In the marriage life, the little things are the big things. It is never being too old to hold hands. 
It is remembering to say, I love you at least once a day. It is never ever going to sleep angry. It is standing together and facing the world. It is saying words of appreciation and demonstrating that in thoughts as well as ways. It is a circle of love that permeates throughout the family. It is a sense of values and a common objective. It is having, giving each other the atmosphere in which each can grow and prosper. Mm -hmm. It is having the capacity to forgive and to forget. It is uh, the common search for the good and the beautiful. It is therefore not marrying the right person. It is being the right partner. No. Just can I keep it? Yeah, Jazakallah khair, Mr. Doctor. We have about one minute, inshallah, before we end this uh, segment, inshallah. In conclusion, love is the law of the Almighty Allah. You live that you may learn to love, and you love that you may learn to live. And what is love but for the lover to absorb the beloved so that the two becomes one? Love is the sap, sap of life. Hatred is the pus of death. You have no friends as long as you count a single man your enemy. The heart that harbors enmity and hatred, how can it ever be a safe abode of friendship? Love is not a virtue. It is a great necessity, more so than bread and water, more so than light and air. Love and be it everlasting lasting peace. Hate and be it everlasting war. Love has always proven to integrate and hatred that has always proven to disintegrate. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the source of all love and happiness, grant Amen. all married couples a long life of comforts, enjoyments, trust, understanding, and uh, uh, um, support, and, 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 and everything that is beautiful. Amen. May Allah grant us pious offspring Amen. that will bring the coolness of the eyes. Amen. May Allah grant us health and welfare and satisfy all our lawful desires. Wa akhiru da'awana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Jazakallah khairan for the doctor. For Allah tashreef we come ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless you uh, for these beautiful wisdoms that you shared with us concerning marriage. And hopefully inshallah we'll have more uh, more topics to come, more subjects to cover, inshallah, and more wisdom to learn from Inshallah. Allah yafazak. Jazakallah khairan. Jazakallah khairan. So this was uh, the, this, these beautiful wisdoms we just heard about marriage from Fadat al-Shaykh al-Doktor Muhammad Radwan Rylands. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him and prolong his life in the ta'a of Allah azza wa jal. Allahumma ameen. It's time for another short break. We'll come back after the break, inshallah.